Hello you plonkers and welcome back to another video today on the True Footy channel. Here we are, round five, gather round for the Druzy, nine things we learnt on the True Footy channel. Here we go. Did I have five pints before recording this? Yes. If you don't like it, click off the video. But I'm going to tell you the nine things that I learned from the nine games of football in round five. Gather around. What a time to be alive. Content creators going mad. Great to see for the AFL community. If you like this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Support the True Footy channel. Without any further ado, let's get into the fo to the ninth. <laughs> Number one. The Crows rebuild has come to fruition. An identity of this Adelaide Crows side ever since their new coach has taken over has been the competitiveness, the hunger, the pressure. And that has formed a foundational level of this side to progress in years to come. They brought that against Carlton. They thumped Carlton, in fact. And Jordan Dawson, he's come over from Sydney. He's the captain of the football side. He's played on ball. And he's one of the most effective users of the football in the competition. He absolutely dominated. Isaac Rankin, he's made the move from a dead club in Gold Coast to Adelaide. And he's dominated. He's doing so well at his new club. Adelaide, they put a de undefeated side to the sword and absolutely pumped them. We knew Adelaide were a good side, borderline top eight side. But I reckon that I've always compared Adelaide to Frio. And I think they're on that same trajectory that Frio were last year. They're going to be a tough side to beat for any team in the competition just with the pressure that they bring and the talent that they have. Dawson and Laird both had 30 plus. Darcy Fogarty kicking five goals. It's been Th Phil Thorpe and it's been Tex Walker and it's been Rankin, but Fogarty had a great game against Carlton. And it was pretty much non-competitive against a side that's undefeated and expected to finish in the top four. So just shows where Adelaide are at. The foundations that they have built in this rebuild have come up fantastic in year 2023. They're going to be a tough side to beat for any team in the competition this year. Adelaide's rebuild is finally coming to fruition. Number two, Frio's forward line works without Matt Tabner. Who would have thought taking Matt Tabner out of the forward line would make Fremantle win a game of football? Every Fremantle fan is the answer to that question. Michael Walters, Lockie Schultz and Jai Amos all thrived in this game against Gold Coast. Kicking three, four goals. It was a dominant display from our forwards. And the second half in particular, I think it can be a pivotal point in the Fremantle season. We dominated the clearance, dominated the ball, dominated disposal of the football. Better inside 50 delivery, which we've been crying out for. And these forwards, Jai Amos, Michael Walters, Lockie Schultz, all having good days out. Even Luke Jackson, he's playing a, a really good role up there, I believe. I just think having Matt Tabner in that forward line just blocks the ability of these guys. Jai Amos had a great game. Michael Walters and Lockie Schultz, they performed terrifically uh, between themselves as a partnership. So I just think Matt Tabner, he clogs his forward line. I don't think he really does anything net positive for the football club. He gets injured, doesn't play, and we kick a winning score, 100 points in this game. Getting over the top of the Suns by 10 points, I know people don't think this is a big result, but the competitiveness, the hunger, uh, our midfield clicking once again with Will Brody back in there, even though he come on as a sub, he made a massive impact. So I think this is a big result for Frio. I know it's only against Gold Coast again, but I think it's a big result for the football club. Frio, 2-3. and three. We're coming for that top eight, baby. Massive game against the Western Bulldogs this week, which I will be streaming on the Druzy channel. So keep your eyes out on the Druzy channel for that. Frio, can we please resurrect our season? Come on, lads. The competitiveness is back. A poor first half, but a very, very good second half across the ground. I think Frio can really start to get their season going again. From this point, Frio really need to launch into this next part of the season because last season it was a similar story poor first few rounds of the season and then we really grew into it and I think we should be able to do the same again there's so much room for improvement in this side and I think we can improve we're still not even showing what we're capable of so if we can just keep getting better every week I think the Fremantle Football Club we we can do good things in 2023 number three Richmond's preseason hype is gone Swans show the levels. 
Coming into this season, I don't know why, but everyone was so hot on Richmond, saying, Richmond, yeah, they're going to make the top four. They're a good side. But so far in 2023, they haven't been able to display their best football for four quarters. They've been able to show up for parts here and there in games. But when you come up against a quality outfit like Sydney, you can see the levels. You can see that they are well off the top four at the Richmond Football Club at the moment. Tom Papley right now is one of the best players in the competition. His entertainment factor, his fearlessness on the ball, he's playing with skill, playing with flair, playing with confidence. Um, and he absolutely dominated against Richmond. He was the best on ground for me. It was great to see Corey Warner debut in this side, alongside his brother, Chad Warner, two WA lads doing great things. Sydney are starting to get into their stride in the 2023 season. They're going to be a top four side for sure for me. And Richmond, are they going to make the top eight? To me, they've got a lot of injury concerns at the moment, and they're just not bringing their best football for four quarters. So... Drunk Druzy says, Richmond at the moment are not good enough. Again, the Swans, they showed the levels where a top four side is at and Richmond are far from it for me. Number four, Brisbane scoring power on full display. A few weeks ago when Brisbane lost to the Saints, the media was all over Eric Hipwood and Joe Danaher's back. They're shit. They're not good enough. They're not worth the money. But in recent weeks against Collingwood, I know it's only North Melbourne, but these forwards have had great games, kicking bags of goals and proving well why they're worth the money that they're on. A few years ago, Eric Hipwood was one of the highest rated prospects as a forward in the competition. And I think his contract is big money, but it's something that he can't control as a footballer. Just allow the man to play football. I'd have him as a forward in my team. I think most people watching this video would like to have Eric forward, uh, Eric Hipwood in their forward line. And he had a good game against North Melbourne. So did Joe Danaher. North Melbourne, their pre-season little dopamine rush has now dropped and they're getting pumped uh, by Brisbane, who are a good outfit to be fair. But I think it was a record for the most marks inside 50 for a game. It was right up there, at least top five. And Brisbane, they're a quality outfit. Charlie Cameron is in his prime right now. He's had an absolute great start to the season. And Joe Danaher and Eric Hipwood, after the the criticism that they've copped early on in the season, they're bouncing back. The Brisbane Lions, they're playing good footy at the moment, and they pumped North on the weekend. North have been pegged down a few, whilst the Lions forwards are playing with confidence. It was a good win from the Lions. True Footy is in partnership this year with Drewsy's Athlete Academy, helping deliver guaranteed results to people wanting to achieve their fitness goals. If you're someone that wants to get into exercise to improve your physical and more importantly, your mental health, Drewsy's Athlete Academy will help you achieve those goals. With programs for gym beginners, muscle bulkers, or something that's personalized directly to you, I'll coach you through every single step of the way to make sure that you achieve your fitness and strength goals. As a qualified strength coach and as someone who was that skinny kid a few years ago, I would give you all my knowledge to help you achieve your goals. And True Footy viewers get 20% off any program using True Footy 20 at checkout in my website using the link in the description. You will achieve your fitness goals. I guarantee you it's an investment in yourself that you will appreciate in years to come. So head to the link in the description. Use code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, no spaces, at checkout and receive 20% off any program that you purchase. I will help you achieve your fitness goals and your mental health will improve drastically, guaranteed, with Drewsy's Athlete Academy. Let's get on with the rest of the things. Number five, we're watching the Bombers fly up. Essendon, a top four team after five rounds. Are you taking the biscuit? Beating Melbourne. What? Essendon beating Melbourne. I do not comprende this at the moment. Like, come on, Essendon, they were trash last year. They've come into this season, they've beaten Gold Coast, they've beaten Hawthorne, they've beaten some trash sides. But to beat Melbourne, fam, are you taking the piss? Mate, Bombers fans must be absolutely buzzing at the moment. And what they haven't had in the past few years is the desire, the pressure, the, the fight, the tackle... And they brought that against Melbourne, who are renowned for being one of those sides that can bring it for four quarters. It was a massive result. One of the biggest off the 10th decade for me. That's what we're saying, isn't it? 10th to 2010s. 
we're not even in the 2010s anymore. We're in the 2020s. Drewsy's pissed, and I hope the Bombers fans are pissed as well, celebrating this result because it's absolutely massive. Man, this Anzac Day game hasn't been this big in as many years, I believe. Like, to come up against Collingwood, two top four sides right now. It sounds mad to say, but man... What a start the Essendon Football Club have got off to this season. Brad Scott's doing great things for this side. I couldn't even tell you really like 15 plus players that are really contributing for Essendon right now. But Nick Martin, what a player he is. I think your midfield's really strong at Essendon land. I think the defence can strengthen up a little bit. But overall, everything's coming up Millhouse right now for you Essendon fans. So congratulations. It's about time you guys got some success after all the drama you've had over the past few years. The Bombers are flying up right now. They've beaten Melbourne. What a result that is. Let's see what that can provide for Essendon's season. Potentially top eight again? Maybe. We'll see. Congratulations, you Bomber fans. This round was a great one for you. No script. This has gone fantastic. Number six. We're seeing a new side to Port Adelaide. I think the showdown loss, even though it was a loss, it was a drop of four points, has provided a lot of value to this Port Adelaide side. Last week, they played Sydney, and they held out for a tough win, kicking a few last quarter goals and holding on to the win to provide a big four points and a massive away win for the football club. And this week, they come up against the Western Bulldogs. Now, they've had a lot of trauma against this Bulldogs side, obviously losing to them in the prelim by a big margin a few years ago. It was a wet, contested, and tough contest. And again, Port Adelaide come out on top in a close game for two weeks running. It was a massive result for the football club. And I loved Ken Hinckley coming out in the post-match press conference and backing Jason Horn Francis. I know he might not be the most likable character, but he is 19 years old. And I know lots of the people that watch these videos, they are teenagers. But if you're 19, you are a child. I'm 21, to put that in perspective. Am I the most effective kick inside 50 in the Aussie rules right now? No. I'm living in England in a village getting pissed on a Sunday. Jason Horn Francis is the next Patrick Dangerfield, if not levels above. He's started very highly this season. I think he's one of Port Adelaide's top five most influential players on the ball. Todd Marshall starting to play great footy. Butters is playing great footy. We know what he brings. He's just such a, a ball. Loves to put his head over the ball. Come back from that injury very strongly. And he was a great player alongside Horn Francis in that midfield that got this win for the Port Adelaide Football Club. Alira Lear is back in great form as well. So Port Adelaide season has turned right around after those round two and three losses. Port Adelaide fans should be very happy right now. Plenty of potential in this side still. And I think Ken Hinckley has got the respect of the players. So it's, it's good times at Port Adelaide after some concerning weeks in the start of the season. Number seven, Geelong continue to bully bottom sides. They pumped Hawthorne last week and they pumped West Coast this week. I mean, what can we learn from a game where Geelong play a bottom side and they absolutely pump them? They're forwards, they're having a field day. Hawkins and Cameron both kicking bags. Close kicking four as well. Eagles have a real bad injury list at the moment. They're so far from it. Coming up against the Premier's, who actually goes, I learned something from this game from Geelong. Real character building, all right? Allow me. No, nothing learned here, really, except for Geelong are better than the bottom sides. And they bully them when they can. A massive win for Geelong to get them four premiership points, which they need to keep gathering after that slow start. Well done, Geelong. You've beaten Hawthorne and West Coast. Congratulations. Next. <laughs> this guy should be a YouTuber. Number eight, a clash of the titans. <laughs> Hawthorne are the wooden spoon number ones right now. We all know this. GWS get a two-point win at home. Come on! Like, does this actually mean anything in the context of the season? When we go, right, round five, GWS versus Hawthorne. That was a great game. Two-point thriller. Yeah, I really enjoyed that one. I wish every game of football was like this. No. <laughs> Look, I watched a fair amount of this game, and all I could see was GWS's stars, they carry this side. And Hawthorne, they just have the 
lowest lip list depth lisp depth in the competition right now. So who cares? Who actually cares? If you care and you're pissed off about this analysis, comment down below and I'll issue you with a formal apology. But if not, I don't care. Druzy's pissed. This is the eighth thing that we learned from round five. Let's move on to the last. And number nine, Nick Dacos is on a GOAT trajectory. Tell me a player that is the most influential player in their team in their second year in the competition in a side that is going for a premiership. 42 disposals. Man, Nick Dacos, he has all the skill. I know I've spoken about him so much before, but 42 disposals against St. Kilda, who have been one of the toughest sides this season. This kid is as special as it gets. I hope you guys recognize this when you watch Nick Dacos. They don't come like this very often. His kicks are just inch perfect. He has to be a Brownlow medal winner at one point. I'm sure he's already racked up many Brownlow votes this season. When I watch this kid, it's just a pleasure to watch him play Nick Dacos. What a player he is. Collingwood, they were in control for most of this game. I'm not going to lie, only saw the third and fourth quarter. Despite a late comeback from the Saints, it was a contested game, but Collingwood, they hold on to the chocolates. Usually it's Collingwood coming back and trying to win games, but it was the Saints this time. St. Kilda, Collingwood are a good side to only narrowly lose to them. It's not the biggest L, but man, Nick Dacos, as far as it goes as talent in the AFL, I don't think it gets much better than he is. This kid could go down as one of the greatest players the AFL has ever seen on the current trajectory that he is. And that's going to wrap up a lit version of 9 Things We Learn. But before you go, you just stop there. Don't even click off the video. You come back here and listen to me, right? Come back. Here we are. Good day. Like the video, which is free, and subscribe if you're new, which is also free. Now, comment down below, which is also free, some things that you learned from round five, gather around what a round it was. I'm going to be there next year for sure uh, with some of the lads. Go check out Cardman, buddy, all of the lads, Caden, you cat, all of the lads is <laughs> gather around what a round it was. All the content creators are doing a great thing over there. Love to see it. I want to be there next year for sure. But that's going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it, as I said, leave a like, drop a comment and subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you in the next one. Support the channel. We appreciate the love. Take care, you plonkers. And I hope that was okay.